it's really a relief knowing that there is some sort of sense of embrace from people. It's not really the product that they're embracing just as it is. They're also embracing who we're trying to put out there as a mission. It used to be that um, Filipiniana and Philippine clothing like this um, was worn on special occasions only, right? right? But times and things and fashion are changing, right? Tell us about that. I call it Filipina wear. We started back in the Philippines uh, a few years ago where I thought of having Filipina wear as a complementary. So you can wear it with jeans, you can wear it with shorts or whatnot. Initially, it kind of looked off because I didn't know how people would reciprocate to it. But um, I started that marketing in the Philippines when I used to help my parents. Mm -hmm. um, it clicked and so it spread like wildfire. And so I said to myself, well, I don't see that applied here. Right. So I said, back in the COVID days, I think this is the perfect timing to actually build a business plan and create it and spread the word here. And so right. that's where it came. It's very on trend these days, right? Um, they call it heritage fashion, where you wear your heritage, right? right? And right. there's different iterations of the butterfly sleeves, material that you use mm -hmm. for the clothing, mm -hmm. right? And that is all Filipino. And Robert doesn't look Filipino, but he is Filipino by affinity, right, <laughs> Robert? Yeah, so he, he showed me these images of how men traditionally wear these barongs in the Philippines and they're super clear and it's basically like this big over shirt and so I originally looked at him and I said okay nobody's gonna wear those here you know I, I don't think that that's gonna be a seller so uh, he essentially went back to uh, his team in Manila and, and said let's put a lining in it so they they did they they designed these barongs to be like a slim tailored fit with a lining so you, you don't have to wear an undershirt. Right. I'll tell you, I mean, once we launched, um, we haven't been able to keep those in stock. So. And so Mestizo LA was born. Yes. Right. It's called Mestizo because we are all multicultural by nature, right? I could be half something Asian, somebody could be incorporated to an Asian. And so that was a perfect name for our brand because our whole mission is to really make sure that there's a part of heritage that you can actually wear presentably and up to date. And also the butterfly sleeve, I was thinking, what is the symbol of inclusivity? I've never seen one because you can see diversity as a rainbow, but there's really none for inclusivity, right? So I said, I'll make sure that the butterfly sleeve will be that sign. I kept thinking in my head, how am I going to spread that word, you know? So yeah, eight months after we're here. Gabe, what made you think that it was gonna work here? I didn't. Uh -huh. There is 90% uh, fear, uh -huh. but the 10% is something that I have to show him that no, I have business background, right? So let me try what I can do. So I try to make sure that artistically and authentically, it is shown in the audience that, no, this is how you can wear it now. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's just how we started. So Robert, as Gabe's partner, um, he had 90% fear, 10% sure about what he was doing. <laughs> what was your percentage like? You know, I, I'll tell you, I never knew about his 90% fear <laughs> until now. So, um, you know, he's always been a very uh, positive go-getter, you know, mentality. And, uh, and, and if anybody had the fear about it, especially during the pandemic, it was probably me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of his reassurance of, hey, no, we're, we're doing it. It's perfect timing. And, you know, you just have to have the faith that, you know, it, it's going to take off. First started getting this inventory, you know, we had hundreds of these boleros. And I was a little worried at first. And I, I said, Gabe, I said, I, do you think we're really gonna sell all of these? Um, and I'm not kidding, like within, well, we really, we launched officially in October, but I, I would say like our real official launch with, you know, an updated website and, and everything as you see it currently was really in January of this year. So 
you know, in the span of essentially about five and a half months, um, we've gone through all of that stock and then some to the point where we're actually selling everything as it, as it arrives. We found a, a, a unique feature on our website where uh, customers, if they go onto our site and they see a particular item that you know, isn't in stock, they can actually click notify when in stock. And you know, our system is actually set up that as soon as I update the inventory as it arrives, it sends those people an email and we've seen a huge impact uh, with people you know, coming right back to our site and, and buying it before it goes out of stock again. So that's been, it's been kind of a unique um, scenario, I guess you could say. It's a relief that you now have validation. The peop there is a demand for something like this, or maybe you created a demand. You show them something that they will like. Right, because you know, there's always that doubt. Uh -huh. In fashion, I feel like the biggest struggle for, I'm speaking for myself, for me and my mom, is that, well, how would people really like this? Mm -hmm. Is this good enough? You know, and so you question yourself hundreds and hundreds of times, but um, in the end, I think it's what really, what really matters would be what is really the mission of the organization or the company and how does it really execute it, right? right. So the clothing is just an outcome of that goal, so. But you know what I find very um, fascinating about Mestizo LA is that because you come from this family that does this in the Philippines, the patterns, the embroidery design goes way back. Right. So people are not buying heritage just by the the fit, the silhouette of what you're doing. It's also the design. It's it's almost it is heritage. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. right. Like some of the well, majority of our designs, for example, are it has a motif. Like right now, we're all about some pagita flowers. So if you notice, our embroideries are some pagita flowers in a different interpretation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Normally, you'd see them embroidered in a w one tone or whatnot. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then my creative side will kick in and say, mm, let me switch to a two or three tone. Right. And so, you know, kind of different things happening at the same time. So it's like owning not just a piece of clothing, but owning a piece of heritage. Right. Which is amazing, right? Where do you plan to take this? We do want to become one of the one of the retailers of Filipino wear in mm -hmm. the US. Um, dream big, right? It's considered a slow fashion. Mm -hmm. This takes probably two weeks to make. Mm -hmm. Because it's hand- Correct, hand so hand-guided embroidery. Mm -hmm. We try to keep the authenticity of it by putting a little bit of sweat just using your own hands or a laborer's hands. That is our challenge right now. How do you create the slow fashion into something that is ready to go, ready right. to sell? But maybe you don't. Maybe that's the selling point. Like right. this is something that I feel like I can wear to a special occasion or even just regularly and pass it on to my daughter because it lasts. And it's a conversation, um, it's a conversation starter yeah. too, right? Yeah. So thank you so much. Now we have this option of wearing our heritage um, proudly because it's beautifully done here in the States. Yeah. And congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.